The service this evening will include music, reflection, and a call to Lenten disciplines which serve as paths on our Lenten journey, leading us toward a renewal and rekindling of our spirits. Then those who wish to receive ashes will be invited to come forward, where I will apply an ashen cross on your forehead or, if you prefer, on your hand. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the Lenten season which is a time for our spiritual reflection and preparation, leading us to the crucifixion and glorious resurrection of Christ on Easter Sunday. Congregational readings for this evening's service may be found in the bulletin or in the comments of the live stream. I encourage you to engage as fully as possible in the service. Now, from all the places we may be, let us focus our hearts and minds as we enter into the worship of our God.
I invite those who may comfortably do so to stand for the call to worship. We have turned from all other pursuits together here. Together we begin a season of self-examination. We begin a humble walk toward fellowship with God and with one another. This season of wandering will nurture our trust and hope in God. Our spirits shall be renewed in the shelter of God's abiding sanctuary. From the season of death, God will raise us up in newness of life. you to remain standing as we pray in unison. Most holy and gracious God, lift our eyes from things which are seen, for these are temporary. Give us eyes of faith to see things which are not seen, for these things are eternal. Move us beyond pious pretension that we may approach you with genuineness of faith and others with authenticity of community. May our prayers be frequent and sincere. May our speech be gentle and kind. May our lives be given to ministry in the example of Christ. May new life come to each of us and to our community through the renewal of our commitment to you as the people of your own redeeming. Amen. You may be seated. This evening's scripture reading comes from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah doesn't get much ink in the lectionary cycle, but we're going to pull him from the depths of scripture tonight and be guided through our Lenten season by Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. We'll read through verse 7, and then we'll drop to chapter 2, and pick up with verse 11. These are the words of Nehemiah, Hekilah's son, in the month of Kislev, in the twelfth year, while I was in the fortress of Susa. Hananiah, one of my brothers, came with some other men from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had escaped and survived captivity, and about Jerusalem. They told me, those in the province who survived the captivity 
are in great trouble and shame. The wall around Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this news, I sat down and wept. I mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, Lord God of heaven, great and awesome God, you are the one who keeps covenant and is truly faithful to those who love you and keep your commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I now pray before you night and day for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins of the people of Israel which have committed against you. Both I and my family have sinned. We have wronged you greatly. We haven't kept the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances that you commanded your servant Moses. Then verse 11 of chapter 2. When I reached Jerusalem and had been there for three days, I set out at night, taking only a few people with me. I didn't tell anyone what my God was prompting me to do for Jerusalem. The only animal I took was the one I rode. I went out by night through the valley gate, past the dragon spring to dung gate, so that I could inspect the walls of Jerusalem that had been broken down, as well as its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I went on to the spring gate and to the king's pool. Since there was no room for the animal in which I was riding to pass, I went up by way of the valley by night and inspected the wall. Then I turned back and returned by entering through the valley gate. The officials didn't know where I had gone or what I was doing. I hadn't yet told the Jews, the priests, the officials, the officers, or the rest who were to do the work. So I said to them, you see the trouble that we're in. Jerusalem is in ruins and its gates are destroyed by fire. Come, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we won't continue to be in disgrace. I told them that my God had taken care of me and also told them what the king had said to me. Let's start rebuilding, they said, and they eagerly began the work. But when Sanballat, the Horonite, Tobiah, the Ammonite official, and Geshem, the Arab, heard about it, they mocked and made fun of us. What are you doing, they asked. Are you rebuilding and rebelling against the king? The God of heaven will give us success. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lenten fires. It is the theme of this year's Lenten study. What was the first thing you learned about fire as a young child? Be careful. Don't touch it. Don't get too close. That'll burn you. We were taught by caution, first by words of instruction and then undoubtedly by experience. Fire, when out of control or approached without proper care, can lead to loss of property and even life. At the right temperature, most anything can go up in smoke. Tonight, we will be marked with ashen crosses. This is a reminder of our own mortality, that the candle of life will one day be extinguished for all of us and our bodies will return to our original elements. The ashes may be a painful reminder of other things that have gone up in smoke, things that we cared about, things we trusted in or hoped for. We may sit among the ashes left after fires have brought destruction to our lives. The ashes are yet settling over our land as the pandemic subsides. Fires of nature, disease, and loss have changed the whole landscape of our lives. Mistaken passions, kindled by others and even by ourselves, have brought a tear to our eyes many a time from the wisp of smoke that yet lingers. Why would we want to approach another fire? How do we dare stand among the ashes of what has been lost or come 
any closer, at risk of losing still more of what is precious to us. Well, because fire is a necessity of life and needed to sustain life. We know the physical necessity of fire and we will be focusing on the spiritual provisions that fire offers us as if we dare but make a careful and willful approach. Let us turn tonight to the story of Nehemiah for guidance as we stand among the ashes of our lives. Nehemiah's story is about his bold, painful journey into the ashes. His beloved city of Jerusalem had fallen in captivity, destroyed several times over. In the opening chapters of Nehemiah, we read the words, the gates were destroyed by fire. Yet, God calls Nehemiah back to make that painful journey back into the ashes of all that had fallen. In faith, Nehemiah went. He leads the way for us. Looking at all you loved, trusted and hoped for through the fog of loss and ashes, through smoke and ashes, can distort your perception. As we stood by the lakeside last fall, we reflected on the smoke that rose from the burning of the palms from Palm Sunday service. Turning to the inside of Adam Harrelson, we were reminded by that smoke from the burning palms that fire may have the power to change things, but combustion remains incomplete. Smoke and ashes remain. When our hope, tested as by fire, rises, it is a call to look above the smoke to see what lies yet ahead. When we see the ashes of all that has been burned, let us also see what has not been consumed. Let our eyes look through the smoke and beyond the ashes to see what might yet rise again from them. Isn't that what immortality is all about? Isn't that what our faith looks toward as we head toward the cross and the glorious resurrection of our Lord? When we see the ashes of all that has been lost, we might want to turn away. Nehemiah did not yield to that false narrative. When he heard about the devastation of Jerusalem, he wept and mourned. He fasted and prayed. In doing so, he sets the course for our Lenten journey. We do not need to turn away from the ashes. We walk through them. We are not called to forget the pain, which we couldn't do anyway. We are called to express it, which is something we simply must do. Ashes and destruction make us want to turn our eyes away, but where would we look? Well, our gaze so often comes to rest upon someone, anyone, who we can blame. We search for those responsible. We rationalize, trying to move the pain of our hearts into the realm of our thinking minds. Nehemiah stood in his pain and still had the audacity to look within himself. His weeping, fasting, and praying turned into confession, saying, both I and my family have sinned. We have wronged God greatly. Let Nehemiah's confession guide our journey into the ashes and beyond them. It's human nature to question God's presence or care, even to go so far as, well, to blame God when stuff goes wrong, when we face loss, when we are left with gates that have been destroyed and burned with fire. The gates had been destroyed by fire, but the fire had not consumed Nehemiah's faith. He knew full well that God was yet great and awesome. God is the one who keeps covenant and is truly faithful. God is attentive and hears the cries and prayers that are lifted from broken hearts out of the ashes. Something was beginning to ignite in Nehemiah as he walked through the ashes the faith that could have been growing colder began to take spark, realizing that not all had been consumed, realizing 
the presence of a powerful and loving God, he lifted his eyes from the ashes and looked toward possibilities that were yet ahead for him and his people. Standing there in the ashes, Nehemiah and his people allowed their passion and their commitment to catch fire. The call went up through the smoke. Let's start rebuilding. Renewal. Restoring what has been lost. Resurrection of life and hope. That is where this Lenten journey is heading. But it is no easy path. We must summon courage to face our pain, confess our sin, come closer to the Lenten fires and allow God to transform our lives that we may begin to rebuild all that has been lost. Fellowship, trust, community, faith, vitality and commitment, joy. Clarissa Pinkola Estes has written, Deep in the wintry parts of our minds, we know that there is no such thing as a work-free transformation. We know that we will have to burn to the ground in one way or another and sit right in the ashes of who we once thought we were and go on from there. Oh, there were those who mocked Nehemiah, saying, Will they revive the stones even though they are burned? With a newly ignited passion and commitment, Nehemiah must have said, Yes. Yes, we will, with the help of God. Our God is a God of restoration, of renewal, a God of transformation. Even from the ashes, our faith declares... Our God is a God of resurrection. Amen.
You may be seated. As we move through the Lenten study over the next few weeks, one of the things that we will call attention to is that fire is the only of the four elements that has a life cycle. It has to be given birth by a spark. It has to be fed fuel to be sustained. It needs oxygen to continue to breathe and burn. And it may die out if it grows cold. As such, it is a depiction of our spiritual lives. In order to be ignited, we much, must catch the spark of the spirit. In order to sustain our spiritual passion, it must be fed. If ever it grows cold, we must seek to have it rekindled. Practicing Lenten disciplines, whether it's an act of self-denial, special commitment, good deeds, or focused prayer and Bible study, or what spark and fuel our souls to burn brightly with divine light. The invitation to Lenten discipline is a call to draw close to the Lenten fire through spiritual disciplines so that our souls can come to burn as one with the divine fire of God. With intention, let us commit to the diligent pursuit of Lenten disciplines, praying for one another and encouraging one another earnestly.
As Nehemiah walked through the gates that had been destroyed by fire, he wept and mourned. Before he went any further on his journey, he confessed his sin. Let us follow his example and confess our sin as we prepare to be marked by ashes. Those who are comfortable doing so are invited to stand as we pray in unison the prayer of confession. Help us, O God, to be truthful with ourselves, with one another, and with you. Our souls are weary beneath the weight of silence. Our pretentious words have become no more than groans, longing for restored fellowship with you and connection to one another. We acknowledge our sin. Our iniquity we do not hide. We confess our transgressions and seek your forgiveness. Renew our souls and raise us up from the ashes to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the assurance of our pardon. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the one whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no seat. In Christ, God has forgiven us and restored us to the joy of God's salvation. Thanks be to God. be seated. Ashes call us to honesty. They call us to be honest about where we have come from, to be honest about the insubstantial substance of all we hold that defines who we think we are. Ashes call us to be honest about our solidarity with our brothers and sisters, to be honest about the mortality of our bodies. Ashes remind us that not all has been lost. They remind us to lift our eyes in faith, looking to what God can and will raise up from them. The journey we begin tonight leads to a cross and to a tomb. Ashes remind us that even that tomb and ours along with it is as insubstantial as ash. Tombs, all of them, that are sure to be swallowed up in the glorious resurrection. Those wishing to receive ashes are invited to come forward and I will apply ashes to your forehead or to your hand if you prefer, simply approach with your hand extended.
God lift you up from the ashes to do this in life. Faith lives and rises from even ashes. Brother Carlos, may God lift you from the ashes to newness of life. As the Lenten fires burn, may our souls be rekindled, refined, renewed, and restored as only the fires of God can do. Be well. Mm -hmm.